David Zritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. It is, uh, it's pretty remarkable after one year that Spectre has been out that we can still show you something new. And today we're here to talk about the Morocco post train outfit. This is after he has the big fight, has a little whoopee with Madeline, and they're about to go to Blofeld's lair. They're in the desert. And he comes out in that very beige throwback to Timothy Dalton type outfit. This is some people's favorite outfit, but the reason we took about a year to talk about it is that's how long it took to get all these components together. Imagine a world that you could just order the Morocco Post Train James Bond Spectre outfit somewhere in your size and it comes in all the parts and pieces. It doesn't work like that. It takes a lot of detectives, a lot of people, a lot of time, a lot of effort, and finally we are here. So let's start talking about it. We're going to do some easy ones first. Um, obviously, you know this puppy. This is the Omega watch. This is the Spectre Limited Edition. Um, it is a part of the outfit, so we've got to talk about it right away. And since we're on the subject of accessories, we got to talk about the Henrys. Now, the Henrys, if you remember, uh, we talked about in another vlog, so we're not going to go into too much detail. You want to see these, you can just go to the Spectre Sunglass vlog. It's somewhere in this YouTube channel here. But I do like the Henrys. I think they're a nice um, vintage harken back to the Wayfair Clubmasters. They've got a nice streamlined look to them. I think, I think, they're made a little bit better than some of the other Tom Ford sunglasses that we've seen in other movies. And certainly my favorite of this movie. And boy does it go with this outfit, especially with the environment that you see Bond in. So let's keep it going, because there's a lot of parts to this. The belt. So this is the much difficult to find Brunello Cuccinelli belt. And as you can see, it is that type of belt like we've seen with R.M. Williams. Um, you've seen it also in another vlog. If you, again, want to see the details of this, you can go see it in the belts of Spectre. Boy, we've done a lot of vlogs. Pretty specific. Um, but this is a great belt, except for the fact that the dye runs on the pants that you wear them with. Not happy about that. And especially for the price, you would think that it wouldn't. But it is the correct one. There's a darker one that's out there, which has uh, the wrong buckle. This is the correct buckle. It's got to have all of these details. If it does not, it's not the right one. There's a lot of lookalikes, and there's nothing wrong with a lookalike, and you can get lookalikes for a bargain. But if you want the correct one, it's got to have this very smooth leather with the holes. It's got to have this braided plate over here, and it's got to have this right buckle, and it's got to be the right color. I know, I know, a lot of components, a lot of details. But now we start to get to the fun. Here we have the Tom Ford Made to Measure shirt. Now, why is this made to measure? Well, the wonderful thing about Tom Ford is they always like to make it a challenge for us, don't they? A lot of shirts in the movie, but this one in particular had to be made to measure because these have the Dr. No cuffs, and you saw those in some of the, the promo shots um, when he's wearing the blue one, but this was a white one, Dr. No cuffs, and you couldn't get them off the rack. You couldn't get them off the peg, so you had to have them made to measure. Um, it's a beautiful shirt. It's uh, wrinkled, sorry, but it's darted in the back, which is very nice. And also, and boy, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but this is probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. When you order this made-to-measure shirt, and I'll see, is that too close, too far? Is it? So it actually says your name. It says David Zaritsky on the frickin' tag. Not sewn in. It's printed. So when you get a made-to-measure shirt, it says Tom Ford Retail Italia David Zaritsky. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm digging that. It's just little details like that. This shirt was made from the Tom Ford in Milan, as you've heard me talk about. Not all Tom Fords are created equal. Luigi and everybody there. Hello, Luigi. Um, 
they're fantastic. They really go out of their way. They have a lot of respect for everybody that follows the Bond lifestyle and the Bond experience. Um, and so they were able to make this to specs for a few of us. And it's a wonderful piece. So we're actually going to put this on our mannequin here to show you because one of the nice things is, is the color's not too big, but certainly it has those wonderful details that we've come to enjoy in this shirt. And again, this is the type of shirt that it looks like just your basic plain white shirt, but it's got some very interesting details to it. Um, very high, high arm armholes, um, a very sleek type of sleeve, but you've got to go something to go around the collar. And that brings us to another Tom Ford piece. Now this Tom Ford piece was actually a project started by Simon. You've heard his name about a kajillion times here. And this was because you couldn't get this tie. This is the tie that he wears in the film. Now it is a knit tie. You can probably see it in the light. Um, what's really neat about this is at the very top here, if you turn it around, it's almost like a bow tie. It's very interesting because it has that type of bow tie backing to it, but, and it's hard to see, I'm going to kind of flip it around here, so hopefully we can pick it up in the light. It's two colors. The knit on the top is almost like a copper and on the bottom, on the back here where the Tom Ford label is, it's a brown with a pointed bottom. That's highly unusual. And you see those details when the wind is blowing in the desert and you see Bond. You can see that there is brown and copper that flips. That is a really subtle, subtle detail that is hard to pick up, but really extremely important. These were made in limited amounts. It was a one-time project, never to be done again, but it helps to complete the outfit. Another piece that helps to complete the outfit is, this would be pretty embarrassing if he just had sunglasses, a watch, a shirt, and a tie. Bond needs pants. So we're back to Brunello Cuccinelli. Now a lot of talk, a lot of debate, a lot of conversation about what color pants. Um, this is almost like a putty. In fact, I will read for you the tag in here. Uh, first of all, it's 100% cotton. It's made in Italy. No surprise, it's Brunello Cuccinelli. Their stuff is made in Italy. It Italy. Italy. I'm sure I'm going to get some uh, people complaining about that. Um, but the number that's in here is M078WF0050 C1604. I know some of you uh, research that type of stuff. But what's pretty interesting about this is, I call this the pants of a thousand buttons. There's buttons that actually fasten the fly area. There's a button on the inside. There's a button for here as well. There's all these buttons. There's buttons, buttons, there's buttons everywhere. It takes about 15 minutes just to button these pants. They're nice pants. They're a slim to almost skinny fit. Um, if I told you how much they cost, I'd, I'd have to blush. Are they worth it? Um, they're fine, right? But you can definitely get a frugal look-alike. But if you need the right color, if you need the right pants to complete the look, and of course he did that little fold at the bottom, which we'll show you later, uh, these are them. These are the pants that go with it. And you can see it start kind of shaping up. Now, completing the bottom of those pants so he's not walking on the desert floor, you would need these. These are the J. Crew Sahara Desert Boots. Probably one of my favorite items from Spectre. Why? Because you can wear these out in the wild. Um, they look like, you know, the desert boots that you've seen in other Bond movies. They're a beautiful suede. These are, well, I don't want to say they're available, but you can still find them. You can find them on eBay. Some people have found them on other sites. You can see that they are really extremely rugged, but very practical. They could be casual eh, and a little dressy too. I thought it was a very interesting pick that Jenny, the costume designer, put these type of boots with this type of outfit, but she really mixed it up. If you think about it, the lower half of Bond in this outfit really was very different than the top half, but it worked. It kind of had a 
an Indiana Jones from Temple of Dune vibe when he gets dressed up. But here we get to the creme de la creme. Probably the hardest piece of this outfit. This beautiful suitor that you see here, you can see on the back, is from Brunello Cuccinelli. So we're back. So we've got a couple Brunello Cuccinelli pieces with this. Um, beautiful suitor, and it should be, um, because inside here is the bespoke custom designed jacket from the movie. Now the jacket itself was not available. Um, there were some very close availability ones, but some of them had uh, ticket pockets. Some of them um, had uh, the wrong lapel. But if you wanted one of these, you had to get them made by Brunello Cuccinelli, and some people did. And this is one of the ones that was made for Brunello Cuccinelli, very specifically by our hobbyists out there who said, we've got to have the right one. So you're going to notice right away that there is no ticket pocket, no ticket pockets anywhere. The pockets here are slashed. They go down. Some of them went straight across. Um, you've got your, obviously, pocket handkerchief, of which he does not wear one. You also have what people have talked about here, this little hidden button, which is kind of interesting. I mean, you wouldn't normally see this in a suit, but this makes it so the little boutonniere piece can actually be buttoned, which is kind of fascinating. Inside, you will find, wait for it, is it worth it? So worth it. Yeah, let me just take it off here. You'll find nothing. <laughs> this is unlined. It is uh, beautifully unlined. This is like a navy backing up here in the shoulder. But other than that, it is unlined. And by the way, this was not a walk in the park. Because some people out there had it something made and the lining was wrong. You had to get the right color pocket. I mean, if you want this screen accurate, you might as well go 100%. So you had to get the right color uh, pocket enhancement. You had to have the right color backing. The whole thing couldn't be backed. It was very specific. And by the way, even the sleeves themselves, when I received this, I had to go and get this tailored in the Brunello Cuccinelli uh, boutique in New York City because the arms were too wide. They weren't screen accurate. So Jenny made this streamline to Craig's bicep and arm area in the movie, so this had to be as well. So if you put these all together, you start to see something pretty remarkable, which is the Morocco outfit from Spectre with all the wonderful accoutrements. But we don't do this, right? I mean, this is the Bond experience. That's not much of an experience. I just described all the parts. That's just one part of the experience. The experience is putting this all together, so yes, yes, mm -hmm, yeah, you know it's coming. It's time. We've got to see how this whole thing looks on, and that's what we're going to do. So, here we are. We've got all of it on. I really do want to talk about the fit. Now, uh, I'm going to take these off for a second, but we'll come back to those. I'm going to come back a little bit. Do we have uh, everything in? Great. So, obviously, you see how the pants fit to the boots. You've got the little cuff down there. I could probably cuff it up one more time, but I wanted you to see kind of how it all looks together. It is very streamlined. I'm going to try not to do this. Uh, it's very streamlined. You can see, though, what's interesting is, is that it all kind of goes together. The putty-colored or fawn, whatever anybody calls it, with the linen jacket is a very subtle difference, but you can see how the two of them do break up a little bit. And what's nice is now you see the Brunello belt kind of breaking up the white, the fawn, the putty, and the linen. I'm going to get a little bit closer so you can kind of see the tie and everything like that. Um, and by the way, I know his tie in the movie is very short, which is a bit of the style right now. I, I can't get myself to do it. I feel like, um, I, I don't know, I feel like, you know, it just doesn't work for me. You know, the, the tie that kind of hits right here, I need it to at least go to the belt, call me a traditionalist. But I've got to talk about the jacket for a second. The jacket is so effortlessly 
comfortable. It is, now I know it's it's kind of a linen, it's a little bit of wool to hold its shape, it's a little bit of silk, and you really feel the silk in there. It's this kind of trifecta blend, but it feels like there's nothing on. It feels like I just have the shirt on, and even the shirt is ridiculously comfortable. The shirt fits very well. I'll kind of show you how it all comes together. By the way, you remember in the film when he goes up to Blofeld's lair, comes out of the car, comes out of the Rolls Royce, and he puts on the jacket so you see everything. Um, forgive me, I know it's a bit wrinkled in the back, but this is what I mean by made to measure. Made to measure is it's going to fit you perfectly. The arm, the back, the waist, the chest, the neck, everything fits perfectly. You can also see with the jacket off how slim but not overly skinny these pants are. It's kind of a nice way to view it. But sure enough, in the film, he puts on his jacket when he says, oh, my pleasure, when they welcome him to Blofeld's lair. They ask him to join for drinks. He even does this thing with the collar. And they're off to the races. He does the little shooting of the cuffs. And by the way, you can actually see now the cuffs poking through. These Dr. No cuffs look so freaking cool poking out of the linen jacket. And of course, the jacket itself has the working buttons. I noticed in the film he doesn't have the traditional Bond uh, one button unbutton, so I'm going to leave these all fully buttoned. Really nice buttons on the sleeve, as you can see. But again, this jacket, you can see how it can be worn in the desert. I think this is probably a two to three season jacket. The whole outfit itself, obviously I'd be a little bit reticent to wear it in the winter, but definitely in a warmish fall like we're having, uh, spring certainly, summer without a doubt. And even if you're going to uh, a party or even just joining an evil guy for a drink, it works really well. And when you start to put all of the parts together, it really captures that moment in the film. And it's also comfortable. This is something you could walk around a city, you could walk around a party. Um, it's a doable outfit. It's not one of those crazy things. So with gun in hand, you can really make a splash. Anyway, wanted to finally show you this. It took a little over a year to put all of these pieces together to find the right ones. But finally, we have a screen accurate outfit from head to toe. This has been David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience. We'll talk to you very soon. Take care.